So welcome everybody to Webinar Wednesday for the 14th of July. Uh, my name is Stuart Lawler and as always my colleague Carl Braley is back with us and uh, we, we took a break for, for about a month so um, we're uh, refreshed and rested and ready to go to bring you another Webinar Wednesday event. Great to be back and thank you as always for joining us. Hope the weather is fine wherever you are. Our panel today, we're also joined by Sight and Sound Technologies shortcut guru uh, in Dublin, Sharon Lyons. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Sharon. Thanks, Stuart. Great, great to have you. And um, our guest today is uh, one of our own tech support colleagues, and he's also a guru and has been around to, uh, Sight and Sound for a long time, and that's Tristram Llewellyn. Tristram, welcome to the, to, the, to the show, to the webinar. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great to have you, and thank you for joining us. And you're really going to I suppose, help us out today. We've had some questions come in for, for, for you uh, via email already, and we'll get to those in a while. And this is your chance, everybody here today, to put your questions to Tristram and uh, any queries you have of a technical nature. Uh, as we always say in these tech surgery type sessions, if there's something we can't answer online, we will take it offline with you afterwards. And we may ask you to follow up by email or emailing or calling our technical support teams. So please bear in mind that we may not get to solve your problem today, but we'll do our very best uh, to do so. Now, if you'd like to interact with us today on the Zoom platform, you can raise your hand by pressing Alt and Y, or if you're on a mobile device, you can activate the raise hand button. Uh, Carl is keeping a close eye on the raised hands and we will get to you in due course. Or you can chat by pressing Alt and H on Windows or activate the chat button on the mobile device. And Sharon is keeping a close eye on chat. If you are chatting, uh, as Carl always makes the point, and it's a good point, please make sure to send your message to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can participate in the conversation. Now, uh, as I said, our, uh, our guest today is Tristram Llewellyn, and we thought it would be really interesting just to, because I'm sure lots of people who are on the call today will know Tristram from the phone, from chatting, uh, maybe by, by email and, and stuff as well. But Tristram, can we, can we ask you first, how long have you been working with Sight & Sound? Uh, I think I've been with Sight & Sound, I think, from about June of 2000. My goodness. So coming into Sight & Sound in, say, June 2000, and what were we on? Jaws, I don't know, three? I think, we, I think we just had Jaws 3.7 come out. Oh, my God. What was that like? I'm thinking of things like tech support, where now you have things like ConnectWise, you can connect to people's machines remotely. What was it like doing tech support 20-odd 20, 20 years ago? Um, it was terribly, um, terribly threadbare by comparison, really. We only had the phone, really, and email. Um, so, you know, a tech support call would generally take quite a lot longer because you'd be trying to tell the customer to do this or that or have a keystroke um, and you'd have to wait for the result come back. Um, and depending on how complicated the query might wind up being, that could that turn into quite a long call. And was it a smaller team back then or were you, how many of you were on, on the tech support back in June 2000? We were a much smaller team. Um, when I came into the business all of those years ago, we had um, one guy, Dennis, who had been doing the tech support up until then. And we had started doing stuff with JAWS for business clients. And um, when he was out, I was tech support. There wasn't any more than that. We were about one and a half, I suppose. Gosh. What? What have you seen maybe over your time? Because obviously Sight and Sound has developed a number of products that 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 um, that you guys are supporting has increased hugely, I, I would think, in 20 years. But what have been the big changes in the industry maybe that you've seen? Um, the big changes, uh, well, I think the internet sort of just about started getting going, um, but we were still shipping lots of CDs and floppy disks out. Uh, so physical media was a thing in those days, including the JAWS authorization discs. Yeah. Um, I think we went through a couple of different disc-based authorization systems in my time. Um, so the internet's changed a lot of that. Um, you know, these days you're now downloading things fairly routinely, uh, which used to come on floppy disks and CDs. Um, what else has really changed? Well, we get different versions of Windows, but we've always had those. But mm. we went through um, 
There's a big change between Windows 98 and then we worked our way through to Windows XP. That was quite a significant change technically for JAWS as well, um, one of our products. Um, we got uh, we got um, we got reading machines. Uh, we, we we used to have things like the Reading Edge, um, and even when I joined Sight and Sound, that had almost disappeared. Um, and you had things like Kurtzel One Thousand. You had reading on desktop systems, but in the mid sort of noughties, around about 2005, 2006, we had the first portable reading systems um, for people who were, were blind or had poor sight. And were you always interested in this area prior to working in sight and sound? Were you always interested in how this technology worked? Um, I think I probably already had an interest. Um, I wasn't really sort of specifically looking in the direction of what we now call assistive technology. Um, I kind of came to it through a series of, of accidents, really. Um, you know, I, 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 a mate of mine at university called me up one November evening and said, I've, I've got these students to teach who are visually impaired and I just don't have an, I've too much work going on. And I'd helped him through, you know, working with his first PC. So I was sort of asked to come in on that. And I, that's how I got my start in it, somewhere in the mid nineties. Um, rolling on from that a little bit, I started off working on the public lists with things like JAWS. Uh, very specifically and it was kind of through that but I wound up um, coming to sight and sound. It's interesting isn't it when you talk to people about how they started in this industry and how so many people kind of kind of have a similar entrance to yourself came in by accident or maybe a conversation they had or something they spoke to you know it, it's interesting just to hear people's people's perspective of those things and people's stories. Um, Tristram I'd be interested to ask you maybe what advice or what can you tell people and it's always good to maybe talk to tech support people about this but what can you tell people what is useful for people to do in advance of calling the tech support line to make sure they maximize the time they have with you because you're you're very busy i'm sure everyone who calls tech support is busy people want their problems solved as quickly as possible but how can people help themselves to help you um it's a good idea to kind of know, well, if you've got a problem, is it a problem maybe with a particular app or a particular task that you're doing? Um, do you have an idea which version of the software or hardware that you're using? Um, if, it, if it's software, do you know possibly what serial number it is? That might get things going a bit quicker okay. uh, in general, okay. that kind of thing. Okay, so so I suppose have be I guess in some ways have as much information as you can when you call up and as you say yep. have the serial numbers that you guys can quickly check. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and listen, finally, before we start going to some questions, when you're not at Sight and Sound, you're not at your desk doing all this great tech support work. What do you What do you like to do outside of, of the kind of average nine to five? Uh, nominally, I'm a musician outside of uh, Sight and Sound hours, so. Excellent. I sometimes play gigs, um, work with maybe one or two, sometimes maybe three bands at once. Um, I do a little bit of recording, um, sometimes for the same bands, uh, stuff like that. Wow, um, I, I, I imagine it's been a very strange 15 or so months with no gigs to play, no music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's been nothing. I, I, I did my first gig this year about uh, two or three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, wow. I've been talking to singers and stuff lately and they're just dying to get back out there and just you know it's 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 been crazy um well tristram thanks for giving us a little bit of an overview of yourself and some of the great work that you do and and i i'm i'm kind of um I, i'm always marveling at how how great our tech support team are because you guys kind of have to know lots of things about everything uh, which is really hard i think so you know, thank you for what you do in Sight and Sound. I thought we should go to a few of the email questions just so that we don't forget them. And then what we'll do is we'll go to Carl and Sharon and see how our raised hands and chat are going. Um, so we have a message from, sorry, from Raymond Bro, and he says, um, 
When sending a message to the drafts folder or opening a message in the drafts folder and amend amending it and attempting to dispatch it, I sometimes hear one of the following prompts. The item cannot be saved because it was changed by another user or another window. Do you want to make a, a, a copy of the item of the item in another folder? Or if I say yes, it ends up in the inbox and drafts folder. Or the operation cannot be performed because it has been changed. Um, he also says he gets a prompt that says your changes cannot be changed because you do not have permission to modify the item in the default folder. Uh, he says other users have informed me this is a long-standing bu bug which Microsoft are aware of. And he says in, in anticipation, many thanks. I'm assuming he's talking about Outlook. Yes, I think it is. And I think I've heard of that very same bug. Um, it, it's definitely an Outlook type issue. It doesn't really touch on the access technology side of things. Um, I, I think there are a couple of things uh, people have been known to try with that, but it's definitely a Microsoft type issue. Uh, I couldn't roll off a solution off the top of my head particularly. Might be one for the Microsoft Disability Answers Desk. They might know the answer on that front. Okay, perfect. So yeah, and the Microsoft um, Accessibility Answer Desk are really good as well. They, and they work through the Be My Eyes app as well, I think. Um, okay, quick question from Mark and Bernadette Chanley, who are regular webinar Wednesday attendees. Um, they say it's difficult to listen to your webinar speakers when JAWS keeps reading at the chat room comments. How can I easily stop JAWS and resume it afterwards? Uh, do, do you, Tristram, do you suggest people use the, the, the temporarily mute JAWS? Feature? Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's what I would do. Um, yeah. I think it's something like insert space bar followed by letter S or a bit. By S, that's right. And then you yeah. toggle it again to turn it off. Yeah, that's right. Um, n now, the, uh, when a PDF document is open, JAWS uh, asks how I would like the reading order. But even when I select infer reading from document, many documents, when, which is in two columns, still reads in one line, which makes no sense. Can JAWS cope with column text? And if so, how do I enable that? Uh, this is a, a, a slightly more complex issue because you, the thing is, is that um, a PDF document really has two layers to it. One layer is just a bit that most people see, um, which is the bit where it's been put into columns and laid out so that it's nice visually. But there's another layer behind that, which is the text layer. And it's that bit that JAWS is trying to pick up first. So if it finds stuff in the text layer, it will try and read it w with whatever markup there is, um, whether it's good or whether it isn't. Um, if it doesn't find any stuff in there, it will try to do an OCR job on it. Um, I don't think that the OCR, convenient OCR with JAWS, will always cope with that very well. Mm. It depends a little bit on the document, to be honest. It would be sort of one I'd have to look at. It, it, it might just be that there's a problem with the document itself. We were, we were talking to a guy on a podcast earlier this year, and um, we were talking about PDFs, and he was quoting the uh, Forrest Gump. Uh, a line that he says, uh, when you when you when you open a PDF, it's like opening a box of chocolates. You know, yeah. you quite know why. <laughs> <'Cause that's, laughs> yeah, every it's, PDF like, is different. it's a bit like that. Yes, it, they're, they're not all equal. Um, yeah, I mean the two major sort of types is are the fully professionally done ones, which generally work quite well, and then you get the other end of a spectrum, which is just somebody scanned it and they've wrapped mm -hmm. it up in a PDF, and that's all you've got, uh, which may or may not work. It's a bit like it. unstructured websites, isn't it? Kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we do one more question at the moment from Louise, uh, Louise Simpson, and she says, I use JAWS 2020 on my work PC, and I have a problem accessing my favorites in Microsoft uh, Edge uh, from this morning, and wonder if somebody would be willing to access my computer screen to see what I'm doing wrong, please. Um, We've had some problems. You guys can do? We we, we've, yeah, we certainly could do that. Um, funnily enough, I had a, a call today about the same thing. Uh, it, theoretically, it should work in 2021. I'm not so sure about 2020. I do remember that Vispira had to do something to make that all work. And it may well be in 2020. That isn't working. I'd have to test that. But okay. um, that's certainly one we could file away and come back to, yeah. 
Okay, uh, brilliant, Tristram. We're flying through these. Thank you so much. Uh, and one from Tolga, who's actually on the call. Tolga Karatis is a, is a regular webinar Wednesday attendee. And he asks an interesting question, Tristram. I'm not sure if you or I or any of them in Sight and Sound can answer this one, but he says, question for today, will future updates of JAWS support Windows 7? Well, there's an interesting question. Microsoft are the people who know best on that front, but even Microsoft are only giving support to people on Windows 7 if they pay for it. Um, mm -hmm. There are still updates for it being produced, but companies pay vast amounts of money for them. I think it goes up sort of doubles every year or something like that. Um, so I think probably for now, JAWS and Zoom Text and those will still support Windows 7 for a bit longer. But um, I, you're, you're in a very much better place if you're on Windows 10, to be honest, because that's where most of the development effort will be going. Mm -hmm. um, Windows 7 is pretty much kind of sat still, really. I mean, we're, we're five years on at least, I think, from when we were all being encouraged to jump over to Windows 10. So probably it's curtains for Windows 7 now, I think. We might have to say goodbye to that. Especially when they're bringing out uh, Windows 11 in what, October this year. Yeah, but, yeah, that's a whole other can of worms. I've, not, got a, I've, got a, I've got another system spun up at the moment, so I'm, I'm having a little play with that with yours. Oh, um, really I mean, remarkably, to. quite a lot of it does speak. Uh, you always have to worry whenever anyone does like a, a, a user interface type update, which is essentially what Windows 11 is. It's the uh, same meat, different gravy, really, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Uh, well, thanks for that. We've, we've got through all our emails, which is brilliant. Um, and again, just to remind people, if you have questions, you can raise your hand with Alton Y, or you can type in the chat with Alton H and Carl and Sharon are watching uh, those areas. And uh, let's go to have a look with Carl to see if we have some raised hands, I think, Carl. We do indeed. Um, I'm going to go with the first hand that came up. That's Tolga. If you could just unmute yourself. <laughs> Yeah, um, Chris, I've actually got a question in relation to JAWS compatibility and Windows 11. Um, mm -hmm. Do you happen to know how accessible JAWS is going to be with Windows 11? Um, I, I haven't tested it extensively at the moment. Uh, the start menu seems to mostly work at the moment. Uh, desktop seems to read. Um, the Windows Explorer yeah. shell, pretty much the same as it ever was. Uh, they've done some stuff to the control panel, so that might need a bit of work. You know, that might need a bit of work possibly doing. Um, I mean, surprisingly, quite a lot of it, you know, reads, which is testament really to the default scripts in JAWS that they can handle so much these days. So uh, we, we've got basically until um, approximately the beginning of 2022 when Windows 11 is allegedly going to roll out for most people. So Hopefully we got a good five or six months jump on that and Vespira will be testing internally as well. So yeah. it will, it will, I think. Right. I see because what I've what I because I I spoke to the Microsoft Disability Answer Desk through Be My Eyes the other day, and they have actually said to me that they're thinking of rolling back support for Windows 10. Ah, uh, well, um, Microsoft are not always the best at communicating or the most straightforward, so I don't know specifically about that. I, I don't think, I mean, what's going to happen is really the Windows 11 is going to be for the man in the street and man or woman in the street, really. That's not going to make its way into businesses. Windows 10 is going to be around probably for the next three or four years at least, and probably longer, so I wouldn't panic at the moment. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, really, uh, Tolga. Good to, good to talk to you. Um, um, next one, we're going to go to Brian Anthony. If you could unmute yourself, please. Hiya, Brian. Hi, Brian. Uh, hi, Tristan. First of all, thanks for all the support you've given me since 20, 2000. I think you probably remember me. You've supported me for a long time through all my career. Thanks very much for your patience and when I've been frustrated with JAWS at different situations with different versions of Windows. But the question is, throughout all the different versions of Windows, Microsoft, I have a, it could be just me, but understanding the context and where I, finding the context of where I am when I've been working all day, I might have multiple documents open, some Excel spreadsheets, some Outlook, 
uh, emails open, and I seem to spend a lot of time alt tab, 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 trying to get back to a key email that I wanted to find or a document. If I double click on a document within an email, and then I want to go to it, sometimes it doesn't open up straight away. It takes me to Word, and it's the wrong document in Word. And then trying to get, then trying to get, trying to get to that right document is difficult with yours. And I'm just wondering. Is it just me? Is it, you know, like keeping the uh, track with the, where, the focus or what I'm trying to work on when you've got multiple sessions? Over. And sighted people, when they come past my terminal, they all they see is lots of tabs open, lots of applications, as if it's just, I'm not closing things down naturally, but sometimes escape doesn't close it. And is it just, do I need training on how to manage my resources? <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it can get a bit confusing. Obviously, if you're on a sort of a work day, you can wind up with a lot of stuff open and you, it's it's difficult to find your way through all of that. In Outlook, particularly when you're talking about the emails, um, yeah, you can wind up tabbing around and it takes ages and ages because the thing that Microsoft have been doing probably since about the mid noughties has been putting more and more stuff in the tab order. Um, you know, the days used to be where it would be about two or three things to tab between an outlook these days you know you could be tabbing around about you know 10 things one keystroke that might help you with that is f6 that will sometimes rotate you around in a similar way but it misses out some things that might make it a little bit easier um speaking to the you know where are you kind of scenario um the jaws key tab will tell you what control is in focus and the insert T will tell you what Windows is in focus. Um, but another keystroke that really might help you on on the on the sort of a broader level is um, JAWS key and F10, which is the Windows application list, which will show you all the Windows in the list that you've got open. So you can hunt up and down there, get can exactly you close, the right. Can you, you can't close. close all... Yeah, you yeah. can't close them from that list. Uh, you'd have to press enter to get onto that particular window then if obviously if it's something like microsoft word you'd normally press alt f4 and that would do it or you can do um control and f4 which will close that particular document within word tris okay. um can you do first letter navigation in that um yes, you can. F10? yeah in the, yes you can which is another thing so if you know that you've got something like it, uh, in, usually in Microsoft practice is to put the document name at the front of the actual application name. So, you know, if you've got a document called test document, it, JAWS will read you test document dash Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. So you, you if you know what documents you've got open, you can use the first lesson navigation. How, how do you get it to put the file name before the application name? That just happens anyway these days with oh. modern versions. So oh, okay. if, if you try opening some documents, and then yep. you do the insert F10 or 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 a caps lock F10, depending on if you're using a laptop. It yep. will show you those document names in that list, and very quickly you'll see that you can use the first letter navigation to go okay. between them. So that could be okay. real. That could be really useful. Try using that. Yeah, and a quick way to shut all of those multiple Outlook mail items that I end up having open. Is there a quick way to do that? Because if I just go to my inbox folder and Alt F4, it doesn't shut all the tabs down that have popped up with reply messages that I've been reading all day long. Is that, uh, is that an yeah, Outlook I, setting I've got wrong with? It's it's what? not really. It, it, with Outlook, normally if you're in a, a message, you know, a, a because Outlook's got the main window, which has got your list of emails or what have you. And then you've got the emails themselves, which wind up in separate windows. Escape will normally close them. I think you might be able to use Windows B to get onto the taskbar and you can start to deal with things from there as well. You know, so you could right. find your Outlook tab. You could do Shift F10 on it. And at the bottom of that, there should be a close and that will close Outlook and all of its windows that it's got open. So that is another way of doing it. So, so it's not just me having all these multiple Outlook windows. Oh, no, it, 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 it's, 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 <laughs> no, it's actually quite normal, really. Yeah, um, it is. It, it's, just, right. it, it's just how messy things can get on a work day, really. Um, and you're right about that, that tab 
or that the the tab amount of tabbing that's gone up and also the order in which you tab around things in an outlook message keeps seems to change it's so intuitive <laughs> is it it doesn't seem to go to the things that you're actually working on right now and if you keep going from one to the other three times in a row you think the next time you tab it'll take you straight there but it doesn't sometimes <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Microsoft. Stranger. Yeah, I think Microsoft intended to put things into the tab order because that makes things accessible, and that was kind of what was intended. But what, once it goes beyond a certain point, it maybe doesn't wind up so useful. Yeah. Well, thanks right. very much, anyway, That's... Tristram. Thanks, All right, great. Thanks, Brian. Thank you thanks, for your Brian. question. Uh, we might go for another raised hand, and then we'll have a look at the chat. Bill Daniel. It's all you. Phil, the regular attendee as well. You might need to unmute yourself, Phil. Do we have Phil? No. Might have done, but I as think. I just clicked on ask to unmute, all right. he may have unmuted just as I muted him again. Right, Phil, you should you be need, here. You might need to unmute yourself again, Phil. He's there, I think. We have you. Oh, no, he's muted himself again. One more go, Phil. Okay. Don't touch there anything, we go. Carl. I'm not <laughs> touching it. We have you. We have you. <laughs> Phil? Oh. No, he's muted himself again. We had okay. you there. We'll, we'll, we'll have to come back to him. So yeah. We'll come back to you later, Phil. Oh. Um, right, Sharon, so, how are we? Oh, oh. Sorry, yeah. Go on, Go on Carl, do you want sorry. me to just do one more? Yeah, do one more hand then, yeah. Okay. Tasneem? <laughs> if you could just unmute yourself. Okay. Yay. We have you. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for all your um, tech support. And, um, yeah, I, I'm normally not attending usually because I, um, I'm i working full-time. I normally do the catch-up, so it's brilliant that I'm, I'm able to attend for the first time today. Um, my question is, I'm new to JAWS and um, I'm experiencing, I don't know whether it's a Microsoft issue or a JAWS issue, I think it's Microsoft, but I would really appreciate it. What's happening is that my PC is throwing up a message um, saying that it doesn't have enough disk space and then everything just after that message appears, just disappears and my screen goes completely blank. So I lose everything from JAWS, all my desktop, and the, the the tower is actually switched on, but I've got nothing on the screen, and I just have to do a reboot. Um, okay, well, my advice would have to be a bit general, not having seen the PC, but um, when the storage space does get particularly low on a machine, um, programs kind of stop functioning because there's a certain area of the disk that's generally being used to swap applications in and out, and if you get to a certain level where there is no, you know, there is a very low storage space on it, things will sort of stop working because there just isn't enough space for it to actually write any new data. So the question will have to be is what's taking up all of that space on your machine? Is there anything well, maybe you um, could unload? Yeah, I, I mean, the IT help desk for our trust is telling me that I've got more than enough space. When they're checking it there, and they're telling me that the tower actually has, you know, enough space on it for everything that I'm, um, that I have on it. So I've got Jaws on it, Dragon, and JSA, along with all the normal MS Teams work, all that sort of thing. So um, from their end, they say it's completely fine, but my end, it's. Um, it's happening on a sort of regular basis. So I'm getting functional for maybe two to three hours. If that, mm. and then it's just disconnecting. Yeah, there's definitely something else there that needs investigating. Um, I mean, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be VAT that would be causing it to run low on disk space usually. Um, that all just runs like any other program you have on the machine, but something's triggering it. So half the battle with that is trying to figure out what it is that's triggering that message to come through. Um, there's a very small chance that it might be. Do you know if you use the Microsoft OneDrive cloud stuff? Maybe it's telling yes. you that that's, ah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe there's stuff going on there, um, but um, 
you've reached your allotment or your company's reached the allotment in terms of the storage there. That's probably what it is, not the PC itself. Why it should stop your AT software from working is a little bit harder to, to find out, really. Um, that's a very unusual one there. Okay, might, so how... Sorry. Yeah, so I, I think maybe, you know, we might want to see if we could remote onto the machine, possibly, and have, have a look and just try, and, you know, with your, your tech people, try and find out what might be causing that to happen. Yeah, that'd be really helpful, Tristan. So I think what I'll do is um, I will be booking some time um, with Sight and Sound for maybe you guys to look at them um, yeah. at some point. So that's really helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, cheers. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Thanks a million. Okay. So we might just go over to chat in case there's anything, Sharon, that you wanted to bring to our attention at this time. Um, yeah, there is just um, there was a couple of comments on talking about the Windows versions, just saying, you know, that um, Norman says that he first downloaded Windows 10 in 2015. Wow. And it was, yeah, <laughs> it was flaky and buggy for at least the first 18 months. So, um, yeah, we have that to look forward to. Um, and Abby, uh, Abby Healy says, as far as she's aware, Microsoft will not force users to switch to Windows 11 until 2025. Wow. And I would say if Abby is get, saying that, it's Abby's a proper yeah. tech, <laughs> tech person here in Dublin. So yeah, okay. I didn't know that either. That's good to know. And, and also um, there, are, there are specifications. Um, I think on Windows 11, you can download a tool mm. that'll tell you whether or not your yeah. computer is going to work. With the yeah, well, I used I've, to do that with Windows 10, yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, one of the reasons why that, that date sort of has a certain amount of credibility is because there are some new requirements that Windows 11 has. Um, and one suspects that Microsoft are trying to give the people who actually make the PCs that Windows runs on some excuse for them to be able to market a Windows 11 machine mm. to people. So mm. I, I don't think it's one of those ones where, look, we're, we're ending support for it. You're going to have to jump rather like Windows 7. It's not going to be that kind of scenario for, for quite a while yet, I don't think. Mm -hmm. so, so if you're, I suppose if you have a PC that's running Windows 10 that's working well, there's no immediate need to change. No, no, I wouldn't panic at all about it at the moment. Okay, that's good mm -hmm. to know. Yeah, that's good, good to know. know. Um, and just on the managing all your windows, um, Nicola Dixon mentioned the um, insert F10 for list of applications, and uh, which was one I couldn't remember what it was until uh, she put that on the chat. That's and a great Tris, one, yeah. Yeah, and Tris mentioned it as well. Um, and Norman also says, "What about Task Manager for managing?" Yeah, um, Task Manager sort of does a slightly different job. I mean, it, you can sort of use it, but it, it's probably more it's probably more hassle to use Task Manager than it is to use Insert F10 that or Jaws Key F10. That's, that's the best way, really. Task um, manager is kind of a last resort, isn't it? Yeah. Task manager is, it, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's for a slightly different, yeah, if you're desperate, maybe that would, I mean, there's nothing else running, that will be running. So you could always use that if you okay. had to. Yeah. Yeah. I've been I've been using, Sharon, I think I was telling you about this the other day, I've been using Windows and Tab lately, because mm. that sort of puts, you just kind of arrow around to whichever window you want and press enter. Oh, yes, well, there is that. We've had that since Windows 10. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Like, that yeah. puts it in a kind of a grid. Yeah, sort of. I just sometimes I find if I have lots of windows open, it's quicker than trying to do the alt tab all around the place. But I mm. think uh, insert F10, as as Nicola said, that's a that's a, a really good keystroke as well because it lists one, them yeah. up into a list. So it's if you're using JAWS, it's probably a, a better one actually than than my suggestion. Uh, okay. Uh, um, um, can I have one more from chat. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, from Callum. Um, he uses a Windows 10 laptop with JAWS 2021 and wants to use a wireless headset. It works really well, but as soon as he joins a Zoom or Teams call or do anything else that uses a microphone, the call works fine, but, but he loses all other system sound, including speech from JAWS. Yeah. Um... Any ideas? It's and feel going... free to follow up 
with Callum, if, if that's easier. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 the trouble is, is there's so many different wireless headsets out there and it all comes down to whatever the driver is that gets instantiated to run that extra sound device. Um, I have a feeling it might possibly be possible to have a fiddle in the sound settings in Windows. There's a checkbox somewhere in Windows that lets uh, an application take exclusive control over um, a sound device. And it may be that we need to fiddle with those kind of controls to see whether that might help. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's obviously something that Zoom is doing when it, it decides to access that sound channel that's, that, that's uh, causing system sounds to drop out. Yes. So it's, it's it's possibly worth Callum's while getting in touch with support then. Yeah, we can have a little play yes, with yeah. it and see see what we can do about it. It you know we um yeah it it's one of those things where you might have to fiddle, see if you can figure out what what might work. Some kind of conflict yeah yeah, yeah. going on yeah. Okay, so if you want to email okay. into support Callum, and we'll you guys can can give you a hand. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, brilliant. Anything else there, Sharon, that you want to flag for um, us? That's it for now um oh tolgo just asked at the beginning um any updates to jaws <laughs> a nice it's, it's, it's generally going to be a bit quiet from the customer's point of view because around about this time uh this bureau are working up um into a private beta form the next version of jaws so mm -hmm. private mm -hmm. betas of 2022 will be uh, doing the rounds at the moment information starts to leak out about it um, sort of towards the back end of July sort of August um, you start getting hints of what's going on there will be a public beta usually of it um, probably around about September so yes information will start leaking out about it at the moment so if, if everything works as it has done every year for I don't know how long these days um, we'll be hearing about a, a new Jaws quite soon, and that will probably get released towards the back end of October, early um, November time. Yeah, um, the, uh, the, I think on the last webinar, actually, um, Eric Eric was with us, Eric Damery, and he said pretty much that they're hoping to release around the time of uh, Halloween or thereabouts. Yeah. yeah. You should see, and as you say, the public beta then will be before that if anyone wants to test it out in September, you'll have an opportunity to do that. And there's usually two or three versions of the public beta as well. So brilliant. Um, anything on raised hands, Carl? I have a couple for you, sir. Oh, come on, good man yourself. Judith, Judith Furs, if you could just unmute yourself, please. Uh, can you hear me? We've we got can. you, yep. Okay, no, right, it's worked, good. Um, so I've just uh, taken over um, our church website, uh, which uses WordPress. And sometimes JAWS works with it, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes it won't let me write stuff. And I put a, a note in one of the e-groups I belong to, and somebody said they thought there was a tab or something you could click on that would make it work with JAWS properly. Um, yeah, are, are you, it, it's probably um, down to whatever offering tools you've got on the WordPress site. Are you using some plugins there, maybe? I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> no. <what> <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 what it comes down to usually is, is that whatever offering tool that you're using to create the content, it's got to be creating that content in um, a way that is accessible. So it might be a question of um, investigating what are the specific issues that are being raised by JAWS users? What is it? They're, they're struggling with um, and then you know maybe we can have a look at it and, and maybe advise from there possibly right I mean, what might be going on sometimes so the first time I went on it was it seemed to be okay I was writing the post and everything and then the second time I went on uh, it just wouldn't let me write anything and I kept trying to turn forms mode on I tried to do all the things you normally do um, and it didn't seem to work Right, there, there's obviously some kind of problem with the content management system that is being used, um, which is causing some problems there with yours. It might be something we can have a look at and see what might be going on with that one. 
Okay. One of the things I'll just uh, give a, a, a little bit of extra here. One of the things I've heard recently in relation to WordPress, there's a thing called the Gutenberg editor. Uh -huh. And Gutenberg has some not accessibility challenges per se, but uh, you have to use it in a different way. So if they're using Gutenberg, uh -huh. um, you may want to, it may be for the moment, it would be easier if they could switch it off and you can do it in WordPress, WordPress on a per user basis. So if there are other people who are editing the church website, they don't have to stop using it. They can switch it off for your account. Right. But you need to talk to whoever looks after the WordPress system okay. for, yep. you, for you. Okay. And, you know, get in touch with us if you need more information. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Judith. Um, Oh, more hands are coming up now. We love those little little uh, musical interludes, Carl. They're very good. Sorry. <laughs> While I'm remembering what button to press. It's been a long time, Stuart. It has. We've I've, had a nice break. We've had a nice break. I, I've forgotten what to do. Um, RJ Bruff. You RJ. may unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? You. How are you? you? Yeah. Hello. Just a, a quick follow-up, Tristan, on the Microsoft Outlook 360. Oh. You're yeah, we, yeah, yep. we have you. We yeah, have sorry. You. Yeah, um, quick follow up on the Outlook three six five home query. I'm assuming that sighted people are also experiencing what I've experienced w with regards to the various prompts. Is it, can you confirm that? Um, various prompts, uh, as in, do you know, have you got oh, a well, specific example? The, in the drafts, the, was, were you, the drafts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the message it, not being able to be saved oh, because I it's see. been changed in another window or by yes. another user or that. Yes, I've seen that. I, I've seen that on forums being discussed quite a good deal. It's certainly not a, it, it's certainly a much more general issue than anything to do specifically with yours or even So that, that definitely ru rules out uh, any screen reader then, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I would say so, to be honest. Okay, and I'll, I'll follow your advice and dispatch an email to Microsoft, see what they yeah. say. Thank you. Great stuff. Thanks, RJ. Excellent. Thank you. Right, next one, uh, Mr. Mr. Bazzoni, it's all, the floor is yours, sir. James Bazzoni, another regular regular attendee. Hello, I've had a, Hello. a funny little query using Braille and speech. Um, I suppose it's speech that is a problem. Um, I've got a Bible program that uses diacritics. And one of the things it uses is a thing called a space marker. So if you read Nebuchadnezzar, it says Neb, space marker, you, space marker, Ed, space marker, is this a space marker. <laughs> I didn't want to do about this quite because I've tried in the dictionary to change it, but you can't change it. It comes out um, in Braille as a, there are two of them. There's one with all eight dots and one with a C-H-E, I think it is. So like an accent sign. But the, you can get these space markers if you're in computer Braille. <clears throat> um, you can get it. I think you press, um, um, I think. I forget what the sign is now for pressing it in computer Braille, but you know the symbols you get on the, um, um, when you press the jaws, I think it's eight, you get lots of symbols, you get pound signs and all sorts of symbols that you can introduce to a document. Well, it's, it's, in, it's in the document, it's one of those. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem with that is, is that you're dealing with Unicode symbols and you have to somehow tell JAWS what that particular Unicode symbol is um, for it to verbalize correctly. Um, and my guess would be that that doesn't pop up in the default symbols um, table with whichever speech engine you're working with, either Eloquence or one of the other ones. Um, yeah, that might be something a bit complicated. We might have to discuss that with Bispiro and ask their opinion on it, I think. Yeah, we've, we've tried that. I know. I looked through this file they told you to look at to um, change the actual table, etc. but I couldn't find the file they were talking about in the help system. No, no. Um, well, we might have to go come back to that one and see if we can um, get some more data on that. Okay. To, is, is, it is, it a, is it a good idea then tr tr for James to send an email into support so that just so that you guys yeah. are on your radar? That's fine. Yeah, do. yeah that would be a great idea, yeah. 
Lovely. So James, if you just want to email support, then you'll get it. It'll be logged on the ticket and it, it just means it stays on, on everyone's radar, I suppose. Lovely. That's fine. Yeah, we've got a ticket outstanding, actually. We've had a go with it and it's still, still sort of there. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Thank James. You, James. Um, next one, we have Rainer Haig. Rainer, if you could just unmute yourself, please. Just need to accept the unmute request. Call to Raina. Raina, Raina, hello. There she is. Hello, Raina. Hello. Hi, hi Raina. Raina. Hi, <laughs> yeah, hi there, guys. Um, great session as ever. Um, and I have a question, which is, um, so this is concerning using apps like Telegram Let's just stick to Telegram. So I, I, I got really fed up. I'm having to use it quite a lot with the role I'm playing. And, um, uh, and then I found something on YouTube saying, uh, you know, using Telegram with voiceover. And it was a 20 minute long uh, YouTube going, well, there's this feature, but it's inaccessible. But there's this feature and it's inaccessible. And there's this feature and it's inaccessible. And then I found something called Blind Guide, which is a um, some, I guess, blind dev has... Uh, created it so you can use it in a very basic way um, so that's one question is about a workarounds for other popular apps if anyone's got a view on that or ideas and the other thing is which is really my really key question is labeling so again um, I picked up in this video about telegram uh, this person saying well you know uh, and this is what I'm finding with so many of the apps I am using, and I use, uh, I'm using a lot of apps um, in the crypto space, which uh, all of you know, the buttons are not labeled. They've got dev labels on them uh, and uh, not the actual function. And this person was implying that you can relabel buttons. How do you do that? What do you wow. use? Um, you can to some is extent. You can, to some extent, label things, but it doesn't always work. There is a feature sorry, that you... Sorry for the sound. I'm outside. Sorry. Yep. Um, there is a feature that you can use in JAWS called Prompt Create. So um, yep. if, you, if you're if you on a particular control that's not speaking, but you happen to know what it does, you can use Insert F2, JAWS Key F2, and then go to Prompt Create, and then it will give you a space to type a label for it. But and doesn't that doesn't that will yep. be permanent. Once you put that in, that becomes a kind of low. That will be permanent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the caveat really with it is, is that there has to be enough unique information for JAWS to be able to pick that up as a unique control um, compared to any others that you might be tabbing around. Um, so it, it is one of those ones where it's a little bit of a gray area, but in theory, yes, you can label. Uh, you can also label graphics as well in JAWS, um, which used to be a little bit more useful when the JAWS cursor was more free to use back in Windows 7. Um, but you, you do have some options in terms of labeling, but really, to be honest, um, that's only kind of plastering up the cracks, really. I mean, ideally, you want the developer to have done that stuff, really. And, and so, what, what about on an iOS platform? Well, it, it, it's essentially the same problem. I mean, despite the fact that iOS and and Apple is always yeah. considered to be the gold standard, you will still find that a developer can create an app that still has, you know, unlabeled buttons or unlabeled controls. Don't tell me about it. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. it, it, so there's it, no it, way it, of doing that. Is it, labeling it? Is there any interface with on I, you know, with VoiceOver or? I don't think. Don't think there is a way to label controls in in VoiceOver yeah. on 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 the iPhone, yeah. but I could be wrong about that. Uh, it would require a little bit of research. Yeah. You so can, um, you can, yeah, Rainer, so just to say what you can do, and it doesn't. I have found, by the way, and I've only done this in VoiceOver with images, and it does not always retain the label. But yeah, if you hold, if you double tap with two fingers, but do a long press the second time, so keep two fingers on the screen. Yeah, it'll, it'll beep three times. You'll hear like beep, beep, beep. Yeah. And then you'll have an edit box into which you type the label. I use this to label photographs that I so that I know what I'm showing to people. That was my yep. whole idea of doing it. Yeah. I've noticed I've noticed that a photo I might have labeled today might be labeled for two days and then the label's gone. So I, I don't really understand what's happening. 
Yeah, that Thank sounds you. like a that sounds like a voiceover bug. It um, does. It does. Yeah. So, um, may I actually just give? Um, you, you know, you. I, I. I don't think I was able to attend it, but the, there was. A, you think? I think you guys did a session on Clubhouse some time ago. Is. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so I want to just quickly say this. Um, uh, it's a sort of notice in a way to look out for. Um, so, since through somebody, you know, who's assisting me, um, I they I joined Clubhouse and um, I joined a, a crypto um, space, uh, you know, room, and uh, and and I become, you know, within strangely a few days, um, I became a moderator of this room, and it's it's a it's a it's a it's a space which. Um, you know, it's sort of, uh, it, it's it's a club which is kind of growing and it's now got a kind of kids in crypto and it's got, a, a, you know, women in crypto and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, the point being that I encountered two other and another moderator there, visually impaired crypto heads, and a fourth person has come. So the person who has founded this club has now said to me, uh, you know, I will support you if you guys want to set up a room once a week about you know crypto and for blind people you know around blind uh, vision impairment and so i said yes and my idea is and it's absolutely at the idea stage but it's just to say to people to look out for it if you are involved in clubhouse um under flying high crypto um it's going to be a space where um it's it's sort of about you know about crypto and basics and things but also where i hope because i notice that people like me who are kind of pretty up on crypto but not very techy um there are blind you know lots of vision impaired people i think we've lost right now we've we tailed off there yeah that was that was getting very interesting yeah um <laughs> But Raina, maybe oh. if you can if you can still hear us, uh, send us an email because we're doing our own mm. stuff in Clubhouse at the moment. We're running events every couple of weeks, and I think it would be interesting to chat to you. So maybe we can do that. Definitely. Yeah. She did say she was outside. Maybe she did. Yeah. She did. Maybe just the connection went. Oh, this yeah. one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Send us an email anyway, Raina. We'd we'd love to keep in touch with you. Good for the um, next one. Yep, let's go for it. Mr. Octon, it is all yours, sir. Norman Octon. Hey, Norman. You might just have to unmute yourself. Oh, it was unmuted there, but... Wasn't me this time. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not touching anything either. It wasn't me. Here we go. Try it again, Norman. There you go. Yeah, it should be unmuted now. Hi, Norman. Maybe there's something wrong with his mic. Uh, maybe it's that headset. Maybe it's the headset, yeah. It was Norman who was um, having fun okay. in games with headsets. We might have to come back to you, Norman, uh, if you can get connected. All right, I'll no. just, we'll just move on then to Louise Simpson. Okay. Hi, Louise. I think Louise was one of our emailers earlier on in the day. Mm -hmm. So, Louise. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hello. Uh, um, thanks for holding the session. Um, like somebody else earlier, this is my first time attending a live session. I um, managed to bug some time off work, so it's always a good thing, especially if it's nice and sunny. But um, mm -hmm. just a quick um, two things is um, I've never used sort of Telegraph or Clubhouse myself, um, but I, I, I always sort of thinking that obviously maybe the person has already done this but it's worth like contacting the developer to explain about maybe unlabeled buttons um i don't you know, say obviously i don't know if the person's done that but i always think it's what you know you never know if you know mm. who's going to get a response um and regards my query about favorites do, do i need to just send an email in to, to support a site and sound.co.uk or um is someone all right to contact me yeah I, I would do that at the moment uh, because um that will prompt me to go and have a look at Jaws 2020 and see what the state of play is with that. Um, I said it's it should, this morning. I've done nothing else with it. And I it thought should it was work. Just me and I've had an email from a colleague that said the same thing. So I thought it was yeah. Strange. yeah, it may be. Microsoft Edge is kind of one of these curious things because it's, it's a development of Chrome. It doesn't do all the same things as Chrome. And Microsoft have invented a new set of controls for things like favorites. But... Um, but maybe Jules had 
trouble with. Um, I can't remember whether 2020 had that problem, but I do remember it being an issue at some point. I presume that Internet Explorer has definitely stopped being supported then, is that right? Has it? That's definitely... Yeah, because people were saying about Windows you know, 10 earlier or whatever. Is that, is that going to be the same with Internet Explorer that's definitely not available anymore? Internet, is it... well, Internet Explorer is effectively dead, really, because it's now disabled in Windows 10. It's not actually removed, but it has been disabled. Mm -hmm. So Internet Explorer is... It, you know, most most websites don't really work too well with that anymore. So Microsoft Edge is one of the ways to go. Google Chrome is another one. Um, Firefox, maybe, uh, if you happen to like that. Um, but yeah, we'd have to look at um, your particular combination of software, um, JAWS 2020 and, and Edge. Uh, there might be an issue there. Uh, it certainly has been, I know before. Uh, there may be something we can advise on that front. Okay, thanks a lot. Brilliant. All right, thank you, Louise. Me. Brilliant. Um, shall we try Norman again? No, oh. he's gone. He's took his hand down. Tolga's <laughs> back. Tolga's back for round two. Tolga. Hi, Tolga. Um, yeah. Hi, hi. Hi again, Chris. Um, another another question I've got about um, Microsoft Edge compatibility with Jaws. Um, since like since Windows 10 has been introduced, um, how far has development got like to make Edge more compatible with assistive technology, like, like for example, like Jaws screen reader or any other screen readers? Do you have any knowledge on that? Um, okay, well, there's a bit of a story there, and it, it um, a few years back, Microsoft wanted to reinvent the browser again after it was clear that Internet Explorer was no longer the dominant force in browsing um, with ordinary people. And it had its first crack with it, with um, Microsoft Edge that came with Windows 8.1, or was it Windows 10? I forget which. Windows 10. Windows 10. So they, they invented a completely new browser from the ground upwards. And then um, there was a lot of <laughs> archaeology with um, access technology because what we discovered is it, it wasn't accessible and there was a certain amount of to and fro that went but roughly by about jaws 17 or 18 we had access to the new microsoft edge and then microsoft gave up on edge um, that particular version because nobody was using it and so they decided then to adopt the inner workings of chrome as their bra their browsing um offering which is the new microsoft edge now everybody pretty much has got windows 10 should have a new one so for the most part the actual quality of the information you're getting back when you're browsing will be very much the same as what it is with google chrome which has improved greatly in the last four or five years um there, there are sometimes little kinks and you, you get something that works slightly differently between google and and, and edge um, mm. But I would say it's pretty good, um, notwithstanding some of the problems that have been discussed um, just just on the previous question. But on the whole, it's pretty accessible. Um, so I, I would I don't think there's a huge huge no go area on that front, to be honest. Um, right, okay. Um, I mean, well, the, I the, main, the main reason to use the main reason to use Edge, to be honest, as a regular user, is if you don't like Chrome. If you don't have any particular adverse reaction to Google and their empire, then I would I would, I would use Chrome. If no, for some I'm, reason I mean, you have to use Edge, then then it should work, though. No, I mean um well when I when I when I when I'm always browsing, I um I, I'm always browsing with Chrome anyway because Chrome seems much more accessible for me anyway. And plus, because I'm not running Windows 10. It, I have to I have to go with Chrome because of Internet Explorer not working. So I actually prefer Chrome with JAWS than say Edge because it's like the layout of it as well. It's just not user friendly. What I've actually discovered is I, I've actually tested this out on Windows Seven. Um, Edge Edge doesn't seem to work with JAWS JAWS for some with JAWS for some weird weird reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you may be experiencing some kinks in there. I've not tested Edge on Windows 7. I, in fact, I haven't done very much with Windows 7 in the last, you know, four years or so because most people have jumped 
So there may be some weird things where Microsoft have backported Edge to Windows 7, and there's some kinks in there probably. Um, but given the number of people using Windows 7 is dwindling, I, I, that's a contingency that I, I'm less concerned about, I would say. Um, on yeah. Windows 10, it works pretty well. On Windows 10, it works pretty well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, yeah. Chris. Great. Excellent. Um, boom, boom, boom. Nicola Dixon. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> well, it, uh, I had two things, actually. The, the first was carrying on from what the gentleman was just saying about Edge versus Chrome. Um, to be honest, I was an Internet Explorer user for ages and ages and ages because all my favourites, um, I had them stored and on Internet Explorer. And so it was just easier to, to sort of keep on with what was already there. And then one morning, Microsoft said, no, you can't do that anymore. We're going to port you, you know, you're going to, we're going to put all your settings into Edge. So that's how I got to use Edge, sort of by default, because Microsoft kind of made me do it. Mm, forced um, your hand, yeah. Yes, but the, the, the second thing I've got, is it's an Outlook issue. Um, for my sins, I run our um, local parish hall, and when people send me the booking form, I send them a booking confirmation and an invoice. And I can, obviously I've got two folders, one full of booking confirmations and one full of invoices. And I send the email and I go to attach the booking confirmation. And then if I want to go and attach the invoice, which is in the different folder, um, the email decides to go into my trash and that's it. Um, I can't attach, I can't, insert a second attachment and so what I have to do at the moment which is a bit of a pain in the backside is to do two separate emails one with the invoice and then one with the booking confirmation and I just wondered is if is it just my laptop that I'm having trouble with or is it an Outlook thing or um that is a bit of an odd one. I can't see why adding a second attachment would then automatically put something in the mm. trash. It's in a and different folder, you see. So I'm having to go to it. So I can't attach them both together because they're in different folders. Yeah. No, yeah. I understand that. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't understand why adding the second attachment would, would be any different if you can attach the first one. When you're attaching things, do you actually pick it up off of, off of a menu or via an Explorer window, maybe, when you're attaching those? Um, well, I... Um, oh, what do I do? Oh, I go attach, and then it, it it's um. Does it, it just come file, up in the list? It goes well. It says file name, and then um, usually if it, I have to tab a um, shift tab and go into the documents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's how it does it. I don't know. That might be one something. I mean, it to me it doesn't. I it, it's not an issue I've heard of. It's not one that I would say would be intrinsic to one's use of JAWS, but it might be one maybe uh, if you have a bit of time, we can maybe log on with you and just have a look at what's going on. Because there may mm. be a reason why that's happening, uh, but we don't know about us at the moment. I always find it easier just to copy and paste the file into well, the that, yeah. that is another approach. The, the, mm. the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that if you're creating a message that you're going to send to somewhere, if you want to add an attachment, if you can go in through Windows Explorer, as you would do looking for any files that you would do, if you find mm -hmm. the file, do Control and C on it, and then go back to your message with Alt and Tab or Windows Tab, um, and then do a Control V, oh, that yeah. will actually put that attachment exactly. into the message. Yeah. So you can do it that way. And in then fact, go find your other one, yeah, and then... Yeah, there are still yet more ways you can attach uh, a files, <laughs> um, but that's probably enough to be getting on with. That, you, that might save you bacon on that front. It's, it, it's oh, nice okay. and simple. I've, I've used it all the time, ever since Stuart told me how to do that. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Stuart. A few Stuart, years right. ago. Oh, great. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll have a go on that, because it sounds like... Because at the moment, I can only put one attachment per file per mm -hmm. email and the cost you know if you've got two or three attachments to send mm -hmm. down sorry i've got a guide dog trying to climb on my knee at the moment so i don't know why there we are um, just, uh, just make sure you're in the message body when you do it yes i find yeah, generally yeah. that works yeah no, that, Sharon, I, I i honestly did not realize that was my 
I had told you that. I, I, I don't know. I've someone told me a long time ago. I've, I've used it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely used to it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I am yeah. forever indebted. I'll take the credit for that one, Sharon. Thank you. Oh well, thank you very much, both of you. All of you then. That, I'll, I'll have a go with that one and see because if that works, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, no Nicola. And someone mentioned that on chat as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Copy and yeah. paste from each folder. Yeah. It's very, very handy. Yeah. Works mm -hmm. for, for Michael too. <laughs> you can check how many attachments are in the email window then before you send it. Can you? Yep. Yeah, you can what, just shift, just shift tab, tab. Yeah, shift, shift tab, tab and okay. view the files. Yeah, if okay, you're sending cool. more than one file and if they're in different locations, you can just copy them in as you want. Excellent. Brilliant. Any more hands, Carl? We, we, we have a couple more. A couple more. Okay. Hi, Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, yeah. Lenita. Hi there. Um, I'm I'm such a novice and an ignoramus. I feel completely out of place with all the professionals, and I'm using Windows Seven. I say to my shame, but never mind. Um, in in Internet Explorer, when you go to a link in a website and it opens a new window, and you want to close the window, you go Alt F4 and it asks you, you know, close current window or close every all the tabs. But in Google Chrome, when it opens in a new window, I I don't seem to be able to know how to get back to the previous page by closing just the one window so every time when that happens i have to go back to alt home and start all over again is there is there a way of doing that oh the, i'm asking you i don't know yeah um I, i'm not quite sure what's happening because it, it it um links will normally sort of pop up in usually in a separate tab somewhere yeah so like, if, if it's following if it's following those rules if you want to close the particular place where you happen to be running at that point you can press um i think control w will do that won't it it yep. should close oh, okay. the tab that you're on right. so you can work your way back so you can close the tabs individually with control w, w. Oh, okay. until you yeah so you, you should be able to do that i'll try that because and sometimes when you know when you go alt uh, left arrow it doesn't always go back to previous page yeah i mean yeah well that, that that can be that can be due to the website or it can be due to the fact that maybe there wasn't a previous page because if it's opened up in a new tab there is no history oh, to that tab okay. so when you do the back button it's it, it 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 should really have a nice big notice saying there is nowhere further back on this particular tab okay. um, but unfortunately it doesn't so you just have to control w that one okay i'll try that thank you very much that's brilliant and then if you control w by accident you can always do control shift T to get it back. I love that one. Oh. Control shift T will well, reopen the tab. I feel, I feel completely out of place in this, in this learned company, but I'm only trying my best. Thank you. Oh, that's much. a great question, Anita. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant question. Thanks, right, we're just going to try Mr. Octon again. And then that is my hands. <laughs> Mr. Octon. All last, down. Last question of the day, probably. Yes. Now. Norman, are you with us, Norman? Carl calling Norman. Norman. You do unmute yourself, Norman, then for some reason it goes back to muted. We've had this with other people as well. Mm. It, it, it could be a Zoom issue. Probably a Zoom, probably, yeah, probably um, a Zoom issue, Zoom, isn't it? Zoom does its own thing sometimes with audio I'll devices. just ask you to unmute again, Norman. Now, Norman did ask about sound settings, you know, for headsets and yeah, stuff, so and where, is... where to go. I right, don't touch your mute button, Norman. You should be fine. Hi, Norman. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. sound settings. This is where we find out it's... he's disabled his microphone. Norm Norman, <laughs> I think it's if disabled you, itself. <laughs> I think if you send a, a, a contact, an email into support, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's the best way to that we can try to resolve this with you, because the guys can we can arrange a call then. Right, we have just had two quick hands, but I'm just going to let you guys know that we do have to wrap up in a few minutes. So, Phil, if you're very quick, please. You should be there, Phil. Hi, Phil. You are unmuted. Hello. Hello, again. Phil. You have the floor. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. Taking a little bit too long. <laughs> <laughs>
Brian Anthony, back to you, sir. Brutal. Hi, hi. Hey, uh, we have you. Question. Yeah. Tristram, uh, when yeah, I get re recurring meetings set up in Outlook, um, I don't, I, I'm not able to set up an accessible view that allows, you know, week two, week three of those recurring meetings to be visible. So it, it, is there, you know, this, this is uh, Office 365 Outlook calendar and how to set up a calendar view so that reoccurring meetings appear. You know, I end up having to uh, share it to Teams, set up a meeting in Teams, and then on my iPhone, I can see those reoccurring occurrence in my Teams calendar. But going to my Outlook calendar, those reoccurring ones don't appear. So I see all this week's meetings, but the ones that were set up three months ago, every Tuesday at three o'clock, they're just invisible because of my Outlook view. Are you familiar with that problem? I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong, uh, but mm. it's... It's, um, you know, is there a particular view that you'd recommend for JAWS users so that you can navigate your Outlook calendar? I would try um, and go for, I'd try and go for the month view uh, because then that should give you four directions of freedom in terms of the arrows giving you the dates, uh, but uh, within, you know, a calendar month and that should let you see everything you know, for each day, that let you navigate quite easily. I would have thought. Right, I'm not sure um, what view I am in. It might be, I might be in just a list view, and that list view is only showing new, newly created. I meetings, think there's not. Yeah, I think you're at the mercy of of, of some particular view setting yeah. that's happening in Outlook, and it, it's filtering out the recurring appointments. Maybe. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but there's right. probably a, a function in Outlook that does let you do that. That's why you're not coming across them. Okay, you don't have to know the shortcut to go to month view. Oh gosh, now you're asking. <laughs> Not off the top of my head, but I mean, no, okay. if you drop us a quick note, I could probably find out for you. Okay, all right, brilliant. Thanks, great, great seminar, guys. I've learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. All right, we are just going to sneak in one very quick one because I have a strange feeling and I know that this is not Julia. It will be Frank. Oh, yeah. So, it Julia and Frank before. Mr. Mr. Cosgrove. And actually, it's me, Julia. Oh, you threw a curveball at me then, didn't you? Oh. Uh, uh, actually, just a quick comment, whether it's useful or not, is a, a different matter. Um, some people are finding difficulty um, coming in to a mute. Um, I just find that folding down the, the um, space bar works well enough. Sometimes it may not be working, but uh, that's what I do in any case. That's actually a good one. I've, I've heard of other people mentioning that. I haven't done it myself, but yeah, holding down the space bar like the old CB radio. Like the walkie -talkie, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. then just lift the space bar. That's a great tip, actually. Might be useful for people who are having yeah. problems. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. Great tip. Yeah, I really like that. And Hold also, there. just to let you know, Control-Alt-4 is for month for you in Outlook. Control-Alt-4. And it's probably ah. worth worth saying about it because Sharon and I have had this these conversations quite a bit about just the Outlook calendar in general. It is, and this is not a JAWS specific issue. It's a, it's an accessibility. It's how information is passed to access technology by um, by the Microsoft um, APIs. I suppose is that Outlook calendar is very challenging at the best of times. Yeah, it's always been difficult. Um, yeah. Uh, and things getting so much more complex these days doesn't make it any easier, unfortunately. And I certainly find, and I know this doesn't work for everyone because it depends how your systems are set up, but I sync my calendar to my phone and it's much easier for me to check things on my phone mm -hmm. than on Outlook. Mm -hmm. So it might be, might be worth saying that. I, I mean, I know it's been flagged to Microsoft by lots of people and it's been flagged through the screen reader um, companies as well. So it's not, and this is not just unique to JAWS, it's with all screen readers. Right. So, okay, uh, Tris, thank you so much. You've given us uh, so much of your time. Um, we hope we haven't taken you away from a load of calls and stuff to follow up on afterwards, but it's been great to have another tech surgery and, and someone of your uh, uh, caliber uh, joining us. So thanks very much for coming along. Thank you, as always, to Carl and to Sharon for joining our panel, and we'll be back in two weeks' time. Until then, from everyone at Webinar Wednesday and Sight and Sound Technology, stay safe and stay well, and we'll talk to you then.
Thank you, Stuart. Thanks, you Stuart. are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Carl. And so we, is Chris. We,